Hello everyone, my name is Victor. I'm a PHP developer specialized in digital transformation. Recently, I was browsing YouTube looking for videos about microservices in PHP Laravel, and I got a little disappointed because I didn't find exactly what I was looking for. There are some videos about that, but most of them follow a very step-by-step how-to tutorial style, which can be pretty confusing if you apply in the wrong way. So this video is gonna be a little different from what I usually record. Not because I'm speaking English, obviously, but also because I want to show you how you can apply microservices in a real project using PHP with a structure that can be designed for the market. So freaking important reminder, okay? Before building any kind of software, it's critical to first understand the requirements and analyze the problem before jumping to a technical solution. Since I wanted to create a content about microservices in PHP, I had to define a few non-functional requirements for this idea. So number one, concurrency. It's supposed to sustain millions of users accessing simultaneously. So number two, scalability in both performance and storage. That means the expectation of growing the business. Number three, resilience. That it's important to stay online no matter what happens because companies will depend on this idea and this engine. Number four, a large and specialized team, enough employees for them and DevOps. Number five, a considerable budget because, let's face it, uh, microservices are expensive and usually not worth it if you are a solo startup or you are CEO of yourself. So when you talk about microservices, it's also really important to mention bibliography. So there's no magic book or silver bullet, but uh, there's some authors and references you can just ignore. So I'll show you some of these sources on the screen as you go. Always keeping the context in mind to avoid over-engineering. What you see on the screen right now is all the stacks we're going to talk about until the end of this playlist and discuss why each one of them was necessary in that context. So I'm planning to create six videos, each with a maximum of 15 minutes, covering all the layers of the solution. Here's how I'll divide the topics. This video, I'm going to talk about usability, containerization, architecture, steps layer, and automatic tests. Next video, I'm going to talk about Apache Kafka for messaging and microservices communication. The third one, I'm going to talk about authentication and how Kong API Gateway centralize all the endpoints and unify the access. The fourth video, I'm going to talk about local stack storage, which is a simulation of AWS environment and cloud infrastructure. The fifth, about observability, metrics, tracing, and log with Datadog. I'm going to use the dog for make this happen. And finally, the front end. So the, the sixth video is going to be about React.js. OK, so now let's go talk about the project. Uh, we're going to look at the problem and the solution. This is what I call data document, which is a dynamic platform for document generation. When your company needs to print many files using the same template, but with different data, you can either update them one by one or you can mock a template and use it in the backend. In both cases, you need to update the template in the code or database if anything changes. And that's why this software exists. Here, you can manage your templates friendly and outsource the generation. It replaces placeholders, which I call tags, with real data, and it's used in a B2B context via API integration. The idea is pretty simple with a basic email and password authentication. The system has four main tabs for setup and usability. Uh, let's begin clicking on the settings tab. Here you can create a new context like personal data, and then you can add a bunch of tags that will be replaced by real information, like, for example, uh, full name and full address. After that, you can create templates. Each template contains sections you can format however you want. For this demo, I'll create just a simple real estate contract with just one section, general clause. Here's a basic text block I'll format quickly, like a bold alignments and font styles, and then apply our tags. You can see the tags listed by the context, and you can insert them wherever you want, here on the right. Okay, so we're ready to go. All we have to do is call the API. Ideally, another software from a different company will integrate with the system, but since we don't have it, I'll just simulate integration using Postman. I'll send a JSON object with the template ID and the values for each tag. 
And after generation, the document will be available through a public download link, and you can also view in the generated files tab. So perfect, let's move to the code. This is a development environment, so obviously there's no Kubernetes or ECS with Fargate configured. In production, of course, this will be very different, but the idea is almost the same. So for now, just a big Docker Compose file does the job. The backend is split into three microservices, which are called user services, template services, and file services. Each service has its own Nginx, although a single Nginx will probably be enough as an API gateway with reverse proxy. But I wanted to show you clearly separate services on different ports, and then we'll unify them with Kong later. In real-world scenario, I will probably just use AWS API Gateway. And there's more. Uh, each service is a Laravel 12 project with a PHP 8.4 configured and PostgreSQL as the database. The architecture requires a few concepts to understand. It sounds really complex, but it's not. I just focus on applying design patterns. So the services are structured into domain-driven design using repositories for data persistence, and all that combined with event-driven architecture. So in resume, something is requested, handed, persisted, and dispatched in form of the past event to whoever wants to react it. The funny part is those concepts are not in conflict. They actually complete each other. Each principle applied here in this product was not invented by me. I was following the seven principles of microservices as defined by Susan J. Fowler. Uh, she's the author of the book Microservices Ready to Production, which I totally recommend it. I'll show you how the file generation process works, and you can use that to understand the whole structure of the code. Number one. A file generation request is sent from the external system to our application. Number two, the API gateway routes it to the file service. Number three, a controller handles validation, then passes the request to a use case using dependency injection. Number four, the use case is used as a bridge between the service and the domain layer through the repository interface. Number five, a new file request is saved in the database with the payload. After the request is saved, we dispatch an event to Apache Kafka. The template service consumes this event, wraps the HTML, and sends it back to file service. This is really critical. You have to remember our first requirement, so millions of users generating documents at the same time. If this was built synchronously, we'd probably fail on scalability and performance. That's why we need brokers to guarantee master delivery and even sourcing for document generation. Then a second Kafka consumer back in file services reads the completed template, check it for pending documents and generates the file. And that's done. The document is now ready for a synchronous download back to the system. Here it is. All the tags were replaced with success. Everything here follows the clean code principles. So functional names, variable names, functional sizes, all kept clean and intentional. Then last but not least, for automatic tests, I'm using PEST, which is part of the PHP Unity ecosystem. I'm planning to cover the entire API. So the GitHub of this project is public. Make yourself comfortable to explore and see all the folder structure and responsibilities of each directory. Although all the three microservices are in the same repo, they are completely independent and they don't import each other directly. Everything is connected by message brokers and requests. And that's it. That's the first part of Dyna Document Playlist. There's still some code to write for the upcoming videos, but if you enjoyed this one, please leave a comment below, give the repo a star on GitHub, and follow me to see what comes next.